greetings from Kabul. Um, Thank you. I, I, Sarani's question and your answer to her question uh, partly addressed my um, question to you specific to Afghanistan, but I will uh, ask a follow-up question to that. Given how the transitional um, justice process has been or has not been implemented in Afghanistan, especially in the past um, 19 years, um, and I, assuming you're following the um, the the intra-Afghan dialogue and in Doha, um, can you speak to um, how hopeful um, do you feel about both the negotiation process and and following that uh, a justice that a lot of Afghan people uh, and I'm talking about the ordinary people uh, that are desperate um, to to get. In short, um, unfortunately, I'm not too hopeful for short and immediate term. I don't, uh, at the same time, become uh, fully uh, dismissive of the possibility of, of uh, transitional justice emerging uh, kind of more, more successfully in Afghanistan. And um, a positive, you know, one positive uh, development there is that, you know, we have voices in Afghanistan, including and perhaps primarily the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission, that try to keep the issue of justice and victims, specifically victims' interests, on the agenda. As you will have seen, the statement by the uh, Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission right at the start of the inter-Afghan dialogue um, was about that. And uh, I'm also encouraged by the fact that um, they're participating uh, also in, in the discussion. They're invited uh, to the delegation. Um, how much their recommendations, voices will be taken on board is hard to say. Based on the um, based on the power dynamics and the realities and the parties involved, and I'm not talking, by the way, only about the Taliban, but also of the government representatives who have been uh, everything but supportive of transitional just justice. We can assume that there won't be much enthusiasm for uh, inserting it into the peace uh, peace agreement. What I would hope is that there will be. Uh, no closing of doors for uh, this agenda to to play a role in the kind of in the follow up stages. So what we saw, just you know, as a brief background, we saw in two thousand, uh, in two thousand one, when the intervention happened with the Bonn Agreement, that justice was you know mostly absent from the negotiations. Then we saw, as I tried to describe very briefly, is that we saw the kind of a uh, up and down. Uh, trend on, on transitional justice in Afghanistan with lately uh, things being on, on a very minimal level. There are certain small avenues of hope. The recent decision by the ICC, the International Criminal Court, to open formal investigation into the situation in Afghanistan. And as I mentioned, uh, the, the Afghan Independent Human Rights Commission, office of, the Office of the High Commissioner and some others that are trying to keep the issue on the agenda. So. Um, yeah, power dynamics and, and political will uh, will won't, won't be there, unfortunately. Uh, but I hope, and again, this is also one of the implicit messages of my book, I hope that those who have agency, and, and these are not only uh, the parties I mentioned, but also in bilateral and international donors who subscribe to, overall, to the overall human rights agenda and transitional justice agenda, provide support, provide political backing, provide and the necessary resources in order to move forward.